BBC World Service, the Ethiopian cabinet has passed a draft bill to combat fake news and hate speech. The proposed new legislation is due to be debated in Parliament. Now, the move comes after last month's ethnic conflicts in which scores of people were killed. It's believed the violence was fueled in part by inflammatory videos shared on social media. Yeah, now there are already sweeping anti-terror controversial anti-terror and computer crime laws in Ethiopia. So why are new laws uh, lead it, needed to combat fake news and hate speech? Uh, Zacharias Zanalem is a journalist with the Ethiopian paper, the Addis Standard. Uh, who does he think the bill's going to target? I think this will likely be focused on individuals because uh, there are a number of individuals, there are a number of media moguls who have such an influence and have the ability to... Uh, sort of rally the population to both positive and destructive effect. It's something that we've seen over the past year or so, and this will likely serve as a mechanism to reel them in, or so to say, because uh, we've seen this, the spread of uh, fake news alternatives that have tragically uh, resulted in breakouts of communal clashes that have uh, caused countless deaths in rural parts of the country over the past year. So right. I believe it will be designed to uh, hold them accountable. Uh, provoked by what? I mean, give us an example. Well, uh, I can cite one example where uh, there was a uh, Ethiopian satellite uh, television network uh, in the country uh, published a video which it said uh, uh, it displayed uh, horrific acts of violence being carried out against Somalis by the uh, ethnic Oromo population in the area and it happened so happened that the video was actually uh, filmed a year ago in the Central African Republic and ha had absolutely nothing to do with Ethiopia and the publishing of the video and the spread of the story that was in, that was attached to it uh, was apparently linked to uh, several reprisal attacks within the area against the Oromo community within weeks of the publishing of the video. There are many, many tools open to a government to limit uh, broadcasting and stories that circulate. Uh, why do you think this is necessary now? Well, uh, there may be many laws. Uh, however, a lot of them are left open to interpretation because uh, the 2009 anti-terrorism proclamation, in practice, it was used to clamp down on anyone expressing any sort of dissent. It resulted in tens of thousands of uh, people being arrested on uh, fictitious charges. Do you think, therefore, that this draft media bill could be used in the same way? Is there room for it to be used in that manner? There is, because uh, unfortunately, despite the fact that uh, the much heralded age of reform uh, has taken over Ethiopia for much of the past year or so, we saw very recently, uh, we saw arrests of journalists, we saw arrests of activists linked to uh, stories that uh, quashed the, the Ethiopian government's narrative uh, in the aftermath of uh, an attempted coup in the Amhara region. Would you say that this is partly the government trying to control the effects of its gradual liberalization. As people get more space to express themselves, there is unfortunately ethnic and other communal tension which rushes in. The government is trying to manage that and this would seem to be a tool to try to manage it. Um, yeah, it would be fair to say that. I mean, you could, I guess one could go cut the government some slack because it did make an effort to sort of uh, uh, free up the, the media space and just especially within the, the initial months of uh, the government the new government coming to power last year we saw an unprecedented uh, flow of information from governments that would have never been able to operate in the country uh, so obviously some of this uh, has resulted in this spread of insightful rhetoric across the country and maybe the government decided very late on that it would have to uh, regulate this I don't think there's a debate in Ethiopia on whether regulating such rhetoric is necessary. It's more the manner of, of which uh, such rhetoric will be carried out the subject of uh, conversations amongst Ethiopians currently. Well, there you are. That's uh, um, an interesting speculation about whether or not, I mean, it's been passed by the cabinet. In theory, it has to be <clears throat> debated and uh, passed by the Ethiopian parliament as well. Uh, the draft bill to combat fake news, that was Zacharias Zelalem of the Addis Standard. You're listening to news. Welcome back to News Hour. The balance between curbing hate speech and fake news on one hand and allowing free speech on the other is enormously important and sensitive. For Ethiopia, it's particularly so, given its recent history of repression and its current upsurge in ethnic violence. 
The Ethiopian cabinet has now proposed new legislation to deal with what it says are inflammatory posts on social media. Zacharias Selalalem is a journalist with the newspaper Addis Standard. This is a particularly poignant topic of discussion in Ethiopia because it seems that we've experienced the extremities of both sides. We've had in the past a government that uh, clamped down on the slightest bit of dissent, which resulted in journalists and activists being rounded up and imprisoned for much of the past two three decades. And on the other hand, in what we've seen over the past year or so is the government attempting to free up the space and we've seen media outlets have a field day of sorts in publishing insightful rhetoric, fake news stories, and social media narratives that have caused the displacement of peoples and in some cases resulted in tragic reprisal attacks that costed lives. So Ethiopians are uh, adamant that something has to be done. And people are dying as a result of fake news. And just recently, tell me about that. Yes. In fact, the BBC itself covered a, an incident that happened last year where a renowned Ethiopian news outlet published a video it said showed communal attacks, clashes taking place in the country. And then later on, it turned out that the video was actually taken from something that happened in the Central African Republic a couple of years prior to the date of posting. And what happened is the false post triggered a reprisal attack and it cost the lives of a number of people. It was one of the most glaring incidents of fake news and irresponsible journalism costing the lives of civilians in the country. There are actually numerous ones. This is one of the most glaring examples of it. In a country that has one of the worst IDP problems on the globe right now, we are probably the most vulnerable to such reckless uh, hosts. And yeah, it's high time the government takes some sort of action to clamp down. How quickly then do you think these new rules could become law? They've been mulling over it for something like a year now, and the problems are ongoing ones, and there are ones that have especially had an impact across the country this past year. At the same time, there is a cause for concern and a degree of paranoia because the precedence in Ethiopia is that such laws have been used to clamp down on internal dissent, on the domestic opposition, and on the general right to freedom of expression. Such was the case with the 2009 anti-terror proclamation. When that was put into effect, it resulted in Ethiopia becoming one of the, the world's largest jailers of journalists. So there's reason for concern and optimism at the same time, and all of these issues will have to be hashed out before uh, Parliament can come to a consensus on exactly how the new law will be implemented and enforced. Zacharias Selalem speaking to me from Addis Ababa.